Today I'm in Huntsville, Alabama, which is called Rocket City. And they're basically the reason that we got to the moon. This is where all the German scientists came after World War II and uh, actually put us on the moon. So come along with me. Okay, this is uh, Saturn One. This thing is big in itself. But it's little bitty compared to this monster over here. That's the Saturn V. I'm gonna walk underneath this Saturn I and let you see these engines. How in the world did this get off the ground? Here's a German V1 that Hitler used to devastate areas of Europe, especially uh, England. This is the Army's Redstone rocket. Basically what they started doing is just sticking a capsule on the top of this puppy and shooting people up in the air. Holy cow. How did anybody have the balls to get on top of that and do that? This is the Jupiter C or Juno 1. The Redstone Arsenal was uh, primarily a place that they uh, developed chemical weapons in World, World War II. After World War II, it, it uh, and I'm by no means a scholar on all this, but uh, just from what I've read, and uh, you might take it for what it's worth, but after um, the United States got all the um, scientists from Germany uh, and they huddled them together in Huntsville, Alabama and uh, told them to start you know, building rockets and uh, it was originally controlled uh, by the army and then I think it was it was actually spun off from there to the Air Force and and then NASA was formed and it was uh, its own uh, separate program then Here's another shot of the Saturn V They've got an intersection that's called Saturn V Hall. And uh, you get to stand right up next to the Saturn V rocket and just feel the immensity of it. Now, how in the world they got it off the ground, they just can't figure out. I'm going to stroll up underneath this Saturn V rocket and just let you see how big this is up underneath. This is one of the five main engines.
I don't know, maybe there's six. This is actually in the Saturn V hull. And they've got the actual rocket set on its side. Unbelievable. And this is the V2 rocket engine that Werner von Braun developed in Germany. That's the V2. It's kind of neat. They've got Von Braun's slide rule that he used. They've got different things from the uh, German scientists and how they transitioned into coming to America after being, a, being in the Nazi party. These, these German scientists were just absolutely brave. Redstone rocket gyroscope kept it stable in a drafting set. How cool is this? This is Von Braun's briefcase. Still has an Eastern Airlines sticker on it. And this is the guy that actually kind of made the moon landing possible. Uh, he kind of changed the directions of the program and their approach to landing on the moon. I think his name's pronounced Halbolt. Uh, I'm not sure. John Halbolt. Um, but he came up with the idea of uh, docking the different components and having an orbit the Earth and, and the Moon, and then actually going down to the Moon from another vehicle, and uh, the original plan was to land a big rocket upside down, or you know, have it land backwards on the Moon, which would have been catastrophic, I think. one engine used kerosene and liquid oxygen. It's the uh, Saturn V first stage. This is the second stage of the Saturn V. This is the third stage of the Saturn V. And this is an example of the uh, gantry that they walked on to actually board the uh, Saturn V.
and there's the command module. Awful small compared to the immensity of this entire rocket. I know this camera doesn't do this justice. This is uh, if you're in the, in Huntsville. You can definitely, of all the places I've ever recommended you go, go see this. This is cool. Here's the lunar rover they use to travel around on the moon surface. And here's what they landed on the moon with. This is what they call the limb. This is the lunar excursion module. This is what you see Neil Armstrong stepping off up. This is the engine they used to get off the moon. It was a, a one-shot deal. If it didn't fire, they were stuck. And the propellants they used in it were just so corrosive they they couldn't pre-test the engines it ruined every engine when they fired it so they just had to hope that it worked now, this is the apollo 16 command module how cool is this look at the intricacies of this door See the heat shield. Boy, they've got it honeycombed. Here's the Apollo 11's hand cast. That's cool. The Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Mike Collins. Here's the different space suits they used. Space boots. Kind of look like snow boots. An actual backpack they used to keep them in a life support mode when they were on the moon. Here's an Apollo 12 moon rock. I have to tell you, these moon rocks did not do not look like I thought they were going to look. They're darker in color. I I thought they would be a lighter color. This is the computer used to fly Apollo. Our smartphones today have much more capacity than, than this thing did. This is about like a, a uh, Texas Instrument calculator. And they're showing a variety of meals they had and uh, the way they went to the bathroom. And pretty ingenious the way they did stuff, the way they 
shaved medical kit. Some of the tools they use to get the samples off the moon. When the astronauts came back, they quarantined them for a period of time. And that's the unit they stayed in. Looks like a Airstream trailer. Okay, this is the actual uh, space shuttle I put together with the solid rocket boosters and an external fuel tank. The shuttle itself is, is a mock-up. It's a, they call it a body double. It was used to uh, practice uh, lifting uh, the shuttle. Um, with the external fuel tank and the solid rocket boosters are, are real. It kind of gives you an idea of the immensity of this thing. I'll walk over and get up underneath it. Okay, I'm underneath this thing now. And once again, I don't think the camera is going to do it justice. would have been one of the O-rings right in there that caused the space shuttle to blow up in 1986. Well folks, I have to tell you that uh, that was one of the best experiences I've had in a museum. And if you're into space flight, and uh, if you were born in the 50s and 60s like I was, uh, when um, the Apollo program was so big, uh, you definitely ought to check it out if you're in this area. And if not, I mean, if you were interested in the shuttle program and and even the space station now and the Mars stuff, they have just tons of information on this and hands-on type thing for the kids too. So check it out, you'll enjoy it.